Hey guys, Andy Pickering here. Today's video is going to be a little demonstration of a track being mixed on the 4-track but with a different mixer. Now, why you might want to do this is, well, maybe you've got another mixer. Maybe, you know, the mixer's slightly better quality, like mine's a much better quality mixer. The track is called Not For The First Time and Not For The First Time I'm using an example from my Bonafide EP. Here's a clip of it now. I always use this EP, I'm going to run out of track soon, as examples to do these videos with because it was all tracked to the 4-track no digital end at all, apart from right at the end with the final mixes. But all the effects, the compression, EQs and things like that, were all recorded onto the tape. So when I bring the tracks up on this, it's really solid, even with the bounces, you know, and you're going to be losing some uh, fidelity with those, that they're still really solid, so it's um, really nice to visit. So let's get into this track, I'll show you what's on the tape, and then we'll go for some mixing. Okay, let's get into this track then. So when this was recorded, this was in my old apartment in my old town back in Leicester. And I didn't have a dedicated studio room or anything there. No sound treatment, nothing like that. And I, I tracked an acoustic guitar down to start with for this. Without a click, so a lot of the overdubs are a bit loose, I guess. And it was done in the bathroom of all places, just because on that day, that decision I made, I thought I'm just going to record in the bathroom and, you know, the tiles and stuff give it a bit, bit of a sound. And then I did some percussion overdub, which was me doing like a kick drum with my hand on the side of the bathtub. And then a shaker and tambourine. Then in the choruses, when that was being bounced down onto this track, so the three onto one. In the choruses, I would have used one of these additional channels here. And it would have been this one, because this is the one you can assign to track four, and I would have been bouncing onto four. Uh, did some piano. So all four of those things ended up on this track as the bass for the song. Like I say, yeah, it is a bit loose playing that bathtub bass drum, but it's got a really cool sound. I love that. And that would have been bounced down probably with a bit of um, spring reverb. So, the lead guitar from Mikey Shine and bass so then I would have gone recorded over the tracks that have been bounced onto this and I'd have put a bass down which I played and then Mikey did a lead guitar now he's a brilliant musician and I've worked with him a few times on some of my recordings and he always comes up with just great stuff that just suits the track perfectly so all this was tracked with effects on it in terms of compression I had my Tegeler channel strip which was a tube preamp compressor EQ which is one of those big regrets that I sold a few years ago because now I would absolutely love that so this was my sort of going through a phase where everything was recorded with the effects on it so at the end you literally would just probably have a bit of reverb on it mixed done so yes the next things <laughs> bass and a lead guitar I love that and then while that was bouncing down I put a drum down And 
there. I used to have a drum pad, like an electronic drum pad, and I'd set up some nice drum samples. So I played that live on the additional channel while that was bouncing. So what we've ended up with there is our full track on two tracks. <laughs> Double track vocals to finish off. It's not right. Not for the first time, I'm sure it will not be the last. And that's it really. Double track vocals and one of them doing a harmony now and again. Okay, so in the solo section, this is me making use of the track. So while the vocals aren't happening. I added an organ and a piano in the solo section just to bring that up a little bit. The piano's on this one. That's basically, yeah, everything that's on the four track. So now let's see how we're going to use some cool techniques to mix onto a different desk. So first things first, our tracks one to four are coming in on channels one to four here. And that is via the direct outs, which are on the back of the four track. Okay. And as much as I feel like this track probably is perfect in mono because of the the bouncing choices I've made you know the the way that I'd plan the track out you know I'm panning the main two things off there the music which is cool it sort of separates it and sounds nice in headphones but you've not got the bass down the middle and you've not got that sort of bathtub kick drum coming down the middle if you were doing a proper production you would want those two blended together down the middle but it gets a little bit busy and, you know, at the end of the day, it's a four track production. So I'm just doing the best I can with it. So there's the four things, basically. I've decided to pan off one of the vocals that way, the main vocal down the middle, and those two things panned off this way and that way. That's just the mix choice I'm making. Now, what the sort of unique thing that I'm doing here is if we come back over to the four track, I've got the, tr uh, the vocals here panned hard left and obviously coming out the master as if you were just using this, ignoring that mixer. Coming out the left hand stereo out, which you know would be part of what you would record down onto from if you're using this mixer. Then I've got that coming in on six. So I've got an extra double track vocal coming in here. And then what I'm doing is sending that to bus number four. And bus number four is out here which is these are all my bus effects loops send and receives and then I'm doing my classic reverb chain which is taking off the low end with the EQ getting 100% wet reverb and then compressing it which is all done through my patch bay and these are my bus send and receive and that's coming back in on the channel so I've got control of what I want reverbed here on this mixer coming in on this fader and then before it hits the master fader I've got control of it here and I'm panning it off so I'm panning the reverb off so I've kind of got like you know one vocal that way one vocal that way but then both vocals are going that way so I'm sort of spreading them spreading them out essentially to just get you know i'm trying to just kind of get as much as i can out of this like i say i think you could probably do a better mono mix and i have probably done a better mono mix in fact it's on my channel if you search not for the first time mono you will see that i did a mono mix literally seven years ago when i recorded the track and i was very happy with how it sounds however this is just good for demoing 
So that's it really for effects. You gotta think I'd recorded down compression on the vocals already, the mix choices I'd made with the bouncing, you know, we're done at the time with the EQs. I've sort of gone a little bit with the EQs, just boosting a bit of the low end and I'm using this because this is on the track channel here with the, the bass and the lead guitar and the drums. And because they're not blended perfectly, I'm having to take a bit of the low end off so that I can pull the uh, guitar out of the mix a little bit because I don't want to lose the lead guitar you know it's all about sacrificing and choices and you know and there's so many ways that I could get this vocal effect happening you can go direct outs of these and go through that and just have it on the channel or it's nice to always have your effects coming on a different channel and I'll show you why because remember in that solo section where there's no vocals happening well I thought I'm gonna then boost that there and have the lead guitar track coming through with a bit of reverb just in the solo, just to make it nice. I actually really like how dry the lead guitar is in the track. That was a choice at the time. And in the solo though, it's quite nice to just boost a little bit of reverb and you just get that stereo spread. So if you're listening on headphones, you'll just hear it, you know, spread across with that nice spring reverb on it. And, and that's it really. And I'm gonna mix it down now on to reel to reel. There, I'm just gonna uh, loop the tape round the machine. That's a funny way of saying it. And get this uh, track mixed down and you're gonna to get to hear it. I was getting carried away there. I just realized I'm not even showing you the elements coming through on the desk before we're about to mix it. So let's just go through that. So there's the original. And let's check this reverb. Take your time to make some sense. Make a difference. And remember that's controlled here. Life is short, but been... thankfully you can happen to be free. Oh, there's some little piano overdubs on, on here as well. On this road I learned some risky. Risky stuff. Strength in you is measured in how quickly you can take to a sudden change of plan. With your fears, I can relate. Face the mold, it is a day. I was once a different being in actuality. channels are kind of going crazy with the red light but this desk has a lot of headroom and it actually sounds great when you push it so I'll show you what I'm gonna do here with the lead I'm gonna push that up there so you can hear that that's got reverb on it and then as the vocals come back in I'll, I'll probably pull it down it's going to take a few run throughs to just get these little cues up but we're going to get mixed onto tape now and I hope you enjoy the track
Okay, there we go. Turned out quite nicely. Uh, maybe not quite as refined as the original mix, but a lot more work went into that at the time. Although I think there's a lot more detail in this. The bass is certainly louder. I think I don't like the way the way things were bounced, but there's nothing I can do about that. For instance, I love the lead guitar and I'd love to have it over one side, but I need that bass down the middle and I have to pan the bass. And the blend, you know, on the bounce between the bass and the guitar. I was trying to sort them out with the EQ, but they're just a little bit like the bass is just too loud, basically, to get the guitar where I want it in the mix, then the bass is up here, and then you have to thin the bass out a little bit. And, you know, it's just all the kind of things that you come up against when you're learning to four track, basically. This is one of the first sort of full four track productions I did. Um, but it's nice to have an alternative mix. I definitely think check out the original mono mix that I did at the time. I feel like that's probably suits you know this type of production the best but you know for that headphones ear candy having that like reverb on your one side panned over you know it is nice and you know see see what you guys think about it I, you know I don't know this was done in pretty much one pass mixed done you know and it has uh, a happy accident in the solo do you remember where I said I was going to turn up the lead guitar to get some reverb happening in that well I sort of forgot while I was <laughs> mixing it and then halfway through it it kicks in but it actually like it works really nice that the first half's dry and then the second half comes you know just things like that, that you know I love about analog you know you can just sort of um, enjoy it okay so I hope anyway that sort of you know might help anyone just sort of think about how differently you can use a mixer on top of your original four track you know using your tape outs and even then using your stereo outs on different channels you can do all sorts of things and have a lot more flexibility to uh, mix a very small production and you know think about it in a different way okay so if you like my music that you hear in these videos please links below my band camp I've got cds for sale and you can stream all my music or you can download the high quality wave files whatever floats your boat really and subscribe to these videos if you're not subscribed we're over a thousand now so that was an amazing benchmark really for me and i'll be back soon making more analog goodness videos <laughs> cheers thanks a lot see you later bye